All right, so I'm going to make this video. Um, it's, it's not part of the homework, but it may help you to derive this, uh, this quadratic formula stuff if, by chance, memorizing it is difficult because um, solving 4x really isn't a big deal as long as you can complete the square of a trinomial that can be factored. So as long as you can do that, you should be in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and start with this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero stuff. Because all of these values, this a's, the b's, and the c, are in the quadratic formula right here. So if we can just manipulate this equation so that we can get this, then we're in good shape. Problem is, as things stand right now, we wouldn't be able to factor out a x squared plus bx plus c. So, uh, in order to make this something that we can factor, we'll complete the square, meaning that this c right now is on the wrong side of the equal sign. We need to isolate x squared and the x with their respective coefficients. So as you can see right here, all I've done is I've subtracted c from both sides of the equation. Uh, I guess I didn't really show that in there, so that will do. And that give, that's how we get this ax squared plus bx equals negative c now. And since I'm looking at completing the square, the next step for me is to divide all the terms by a so that my coefficient of x squared is 1. So that's what I've done right here. And let's go ahead and simplify this. Of course, the a's are going to cancel out here. We're going to have a b over a here and a negative c over a right there. And that's what we see here. Now at this point, we can proceed with completing the square by adding to this binomial and to the other side of the equal sign as well so that it doesn't imbalance anything. We're going to add the square of the coefficient of this middle term here, this x, which is b over a, and we're going to divide it by 2. Now that sounds a little weird coming out of the mouth, so this is what it would look like, right? We've taken b over a, we're dividing it by 2, and we're taking the square of that and adding it to the binomial that we had. Of course, we're doing it to the other side as well, so it doesn't imbalance the equation. And just to simplify those complex fractions, we can make that a b over 2a in both cases. Now, since I had completed the square up here with this trinomial, uh, I know I'm just going to have an x plus b over 2a, and we're going to square that. That's what completing the square is. It gives us a perfect square, and whatever's inside the parentheses here is just what we're adding to x. Uh, but, of course, we do need to square the other side, so I squared this b over 2a, which gives me b squared over 4a squared. I just squared each of the terms inside this parentheses. All right, and at this point, all I'm doing is working with the right side of the equation by finding common denominators here. So uh, at, at this time, I only had a 4a squared, but this other term had just a denominator of a. So I multiplied the numerator and denominator by 4 and a. And, of course, that was a negative C, so I just put the negative in front there. So just combining that, um, making it look, look a little bit better by simplifying this A times A, which is A squared, and then putting the A and C in alphabetical order, which is just kind of a formality in that case. But now we can see between these two terms, we have the common denominators, which allow us now to add the numerators together while keeping this common denominator here at the bottom. So what we have now are two uh, pretty simplified expressions on both sides of this. All I need to do is get rid of this squared so that I can solve for just x. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to have to square root this on the left, which is squared, meaning we're, we're going to end up with an absolute value. And we're going to square the other side of that. And since it's an, it's an absolute value, it's going to give us the plus or minus answers of uh, this square root. So that's what I've done here. I've, I've only square rooted that. And on this step, all I've done is I've broken up that fraction so that I've got the square root of the numerator 
divided by the square root of the de denominator, and I do have the plus or minus right here. And now just to simplify the denominator down here at the very bottom, all I've done is I've square rooted that entire denominator, which was this, it, that came from that square root of 4a squared, right? So I square root of the 4, which is 2, and the square root of a squared is a. Now that I have, have that right side of the equation simplified completely, all I need to do is isolate x by itself, and I'll know what x is. And to do that, we had this b over 2a, and it was positive, so to get rid of it, we need to subtract it from the left side of the equation, but we also need to subtract it from the right side of the equation. So let's go ahead and uh, look at what that looks like without that b over 2a on the left side. So it will just be x equals. And so we can see this goes to 0, and this was negative b over 2a plus this expression right here. But we already had common denominators, meaning if we want to write this as one full expression without the two separate denominators, because they are the same, we can just work on the numerators right here. So that kind of does it right there. Uh, we can see now that we have this expression, or this equation, which is the same as the one we started with, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over, down here at the bottom we got this 2a. And that right there essentially completes the proof. So I hope you guys like this video. If uh, you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Like, uh, if you liked it, like it. Uh, just hit that thumbs up button there below. And if you like any of my other videos, please do so. It would really help me out and support this channel. So thanks for watching and good luck with your math stuff. This right here is a quadratic equation. The good thing about what we see on this slide right here is that it's nothing new, right?